Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of biochemistry which we are doing from Satya Narayana chapter number uh, 17 we are going to do today in fact we are going to complete this chapter today uh, purines se related discussions are hamara ho gaya synthesis of purines uh, degradation of purine and disorders associated with purine now a much easier topic today is the pyrimidine metabolism synthesis of pyrimidine is a much simpler process compared to that of the purines purines mein aapne dekha tha there were so many complicated steps aur abhi aap dekhenge aaj ke video mein ke pyrimidine metabolism hai, that is much simpler as compared to that of the purines. Aspartate and glutamine and carbon dioxide contribute to atoms in the formation of pyrimidine rings. So pyrimidine ke contributors kaun kaun hai? Aspartate, glutamine and carbon dioxide. Mainne aapko jab purine metabolism karwaya tha, tab bhi baat samjhai thi, ke to understand different uh, uh, types of uh, contributors of different carbon atoms yaad uh, rakhna bahut zaruri hai ki uh, purines mein jo jo carbon ring hai wo kin kin uh, molecules se aa raha hai uh, bilkul isi tarah pyrimidines mein bhi ye information aur ye discussion important hai so aspartate glutamine and carbon dioxide are contributing pyrimidine ring is first synthesized and then attached to ribose 5-phosphate so you see here also ribose 5-phosphate is a preliminary a primary compound jo ki uh, basic form formation ke liye important hai for pyrimidine and that was the same story in purines as well this is in contrast to purine nucleotide synthesis where purine ring is built upon a pre-existing ribose so technicality is different hai ke ribose 5-phosphate ke pre-existing ring per pura build-up hota hai structure purines ka pyrimidines mein aisa nahi hai pyrimidines mein uh, uh, rings jo hai wo pehle ban jate hai uske baad attach hote hai i mean Regardless of the technicalities involved, ribose 5-phosphate is an important prerequisite compound. That is the bottom line message. Both for purine synthesis as well as pyrimidine synthesis. So, each is up with that. Okay? Now, gliotamine transfers its amido nitrogen to carbon dioxide to produce the compound called as carbamoyl phosphate. So, that is one of the first initial compounds which are produced in pyrimidine synthesis. Or this reaction hai, this is ATP dependent, which means it will utilize ATP and energy, and it is catalyzed by cytosomal, yani cytosol mein maujud, cytoplasm mein maujud enzyme, which is called uh, CPS2, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 2. Or this CPS2 hai, it is activated by uh, not only by ATP but also by PRPP and is inhibited by UTP. And these are important reactions to remember. Carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 is a mitochondrial enzyme. So, 2 is present in cytoplasm and 1 is present in mitochondria. And uh, CPS1 synthesizes carbamoyl phosphate from ammonia and carbon dioxide and in turn urea. Um, and all these things we have protein metabolism mein discuss kar rakhi hai already. Prokaryotes have only one carbamoyl phosphate synthetase which is responsible for biosynthesis of arginine and pyrimidine. So, uh, prote prokaryotes may, it's a different story. Only one type of carbamoyl phosphate, right? We have two different types of carbamoyl phosphates, one and two, okay? Carbamoyl phosphate condenses with aspartate to form carbamoyl aspartate. Now, this first compound was made, carbamoyl phosphate. This is further on carry. Kar hai. So, this is the next step, just made it condenses with aspartate to form carbamoyl aspartate. And the name of the enzyme here is aspartate transcarbamoylase. Now, dihydroorotase catalyzes the pyrimidine ring closure with the loss of water. So, that's the final step then. And uh, ring is formed. The three enzymes, the CPS2, aspartate transcarbamoylase and dihydroorotase are, are the domains of same uh, structurally same related proteins. This is a good example of a multifunctional enzyme. So that's like uh, uh, one particular big protein with different domains performing different functions. And this is what we call multifunctional enzyme. Ek enzyme hai, mukhtalif, uh, steps follow kar hai. So the diagram mein hum dekhe, So that's the first thing which is produced, carbamoyl phosphate from glutamine and carbon dioxide. And the enzyme involved here is carbamoyl phosphate synthesis 2. And carbamoyl phosphate is then converted into carbamoyl aspartate by using aspartate. And the enzyme is aspartate transcarbamylase. The carbamoyl aspartate is acted upon by dihydroorotase and uh, what you get ultimately is um, the complete ring closure. Okay, so um, easy, easy bit. It's not any other complications that are involved in The next step here, uh, which is dependent on NAD+, uh, and that step is dehydrogenation. It leads to the formation of orotate. Then ribose 5-phosphate is now added to orotate. So if you again look at the chart here, so what you get ultimately is uh, this molecule known as orotate. So that's a ring structure. 
and this ring structure is then uh, you know uh, it's going to sit on the ribose 5-phosphate so that is one of the differences between purine and pyrimidine synthesis in purine synthesis ribose 5-phosphate was involved actually in the formation of the ring of purines but pyrimidines may ring ban jata hai. so that ring is formed first and then the ring goes and sits onto ribose 5-phosphate okay Right, so once this happens, ribose 5-phosphate is now added to the orotate, which I have shown step this and the compound that is now produced is called ortidine monophosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by orotate uh, phosphotransferase, an enzyme comparable with HGPRT in its function. So these are two comparable enzymes again in purine and pyrimidine synthesis. And ortidine monophosphate, which is OMP, undergoes decarboxylation to form uridine monophosphate, UMP and orotate phosphoribosyl transferase and or tidine monophosphate decarboxylases these are the enzymes which act on this compound and this compound are domains of again a single protein and this is another example of a multifunctional yeah in this case bifunctional enzyme kyunki ye do function kar raha hai isse pehle humne ye jo teen enzymes dekhe the cps2 aspartate carbamylase and dihydroorotase because there was more than two it was known as multifunctional enzyme this is bifunctional enzyme by an ATP dependent kinase reaction, the uridine monophosphate which is produced is then converted into uridine diphosphate, which serves then as a precursor for the synthesis of deoxy uridine monophosphate, deoxy uh, thymidine monophosphate, uh, triphosphates, all these things. Now, ribonucleotide reductase converts the UDP, uridine diphosphate, to deoxy UDP. By so, ye aapko, uh, sare details agar yaad nahi bhi rehti, you should just know that what you get in the reaction is obviously uh, the initial compound, which is the UMP, which uh, after utilizing ATP can form UDP, and from the UDP, you get the deoxy um, uh, versions as well. Okay, and then the enzymes working here are uh, if you are getting deoxy thymine monophosphate, then you're getting thymidylate synthase as an enzyme. All right, so um, in a sense, what you have to remember is this particular chart. If you have a chart, yaad hai, and unfortunately, there is a lot of memorization in there, you have to kind of ratify these things. But that's pretty simple if you see that. You start with glut glutamine and carbon dioxide, get compound number one, carbamyl phosphate, then aspartate version, then dihydroorotate, and then the orotate. So that's the first ring that you get. Or ye ring pe jake attach hota hai ribose uh, 5 phosphate pe, which then leads to formation of UMP, UMP se UGP, and then different versions of pyrimidines. Okay. Now, what regulates the whole mechanism is interesting. In bacteria, aspartate transcarbamylase catalyzes a committed step. In a committed step basically means that once this step is there, the pathway is committed. That the pathway will move forward. ATC is is a good example of an enzyme controlled by feedback mechanism by the end product if there is more end product the enzyme uh, you know doesn't work if there is no end product the enzyme work and that that absolutely makes sense because say for example if there is a plus b and that forms uh, c for example that's the product so here we have got the reactants and here we have got the product okay and suppose there is an enzyme x working here if the product which is c is produced in big quantity this will be a feedback on this particular enzyme and I get a feedback and this will be uh, you know kind of inhibiting the reaction so if more and more product is there the enzyme will be inhibited and that makes sense okay, already I am in great quantities don't make me more that sort of story but if the product is is made in smaller quantities it's gonna go and provide a positive feedback and the reaction will be accelerated so this is a perfect example uh, a very general example in most of the biochemical reactions that we study in biochemistry that if there is a negative feedback mechanism that is product oriented okay so that ha that's what happens in bacteria now cps2 which is present in, in in us as well is the regulatory enzyme for pyrimidine synthesis in animals it is activated by prpp and uh, ATP and it is inhibited by UDP and UTP. So these are the end products. So again, the same mechanism. If the end products are more, they're going to go and uh, give negative feedback. Okay. Then OMP decarboxylase inhibited by UMP and CMP also controls the pyrimidine formation. So at the end of the day, UDP, which is a product, it goes and uh, controls the carbamoyl uh, uh, synthetase 2, CPS2. 
so that's a negative feedback mechanism so if the product is more the reaction is slowed down that sort of thing okay easy stuff that's again an easy stuff to understand now how pyrimidines are degraded the pyrimidine nucleotides undergo similar reaction like that of purine nucleotides to liberate the nitrogenous bases uh, such as cytosine uracil thymidine this is almost a similar story that we did in purines the bases are then degraded to highly soluble products such as beta alanine and beta amino isobutyrate these are the amino acids which undergo transamination and other reactions to finally produce acetyl coa and succinyl coa so these are the kind of end products and then there is a salvage pathway as well again similar to purines it can also serve as precursor in the salvage pathway the pyrimidines to be converted into respective nucleotides this reaction is catalyzed by pyrimidine phosphoribosyl transferate which utilizes prpp as a source of rap so this is almost similar what we discussed in purines and then there are some important disorders also so bottom line degradation ki bottom line it's very much similar to what we did in purines okay now there are some disorders which are associated uh, with pyrimidine metabolism a couple of them you have to remember by name uh, particularly the race syndrome and aortic aciduria so aortic acid urea first this is a rare metabolic disorder characterized by excretion of aortic acid in the urine severe anemia and retarded growth so it is due to the deficiency again if you are having more and more aortic acid uh, so there must be something wrong within the enzymatic machinery and therefore in any metabolic disorder it is very important that you must understand ki kaun sa enzyme disturbed hai so in that particular case it is orotate phosphoribosyl transferase and omp decarbonase so see where do these enzymes work so orotate transferase is basically working at the step um where the ring is connected to ribose 5 phosphate so if this enzyme is not working is enzyme ke upar jo product hai that will be accumulated in large quantities and that product will be orotate and therefore this is called aortic acid urea so it is then going to go out and excrete in urine okay so uh, that's making sense perfectly then feeding diet rich in uridin and or cytidine is effective treatment for aortic acid urea because um, you are not going to continue the pyrimidine metabolism beyond this step of orotate so you have to get diet rich in uridine and cytidine so that you have other sources for pyrimidine nucleotides okay so that the dna rna synthesis continues normally what is raise syndrome this is considered as a secondary aortic acid urea it is believed that a defect in ornithine transcarbamylase causes accumulation of carbon oil phosphate this is then diverted for increased synthesis and excretion obviously um ek mechanism to aortic acid ke badhne ka aortate ke badhne ka ye hai ki iska jo next forward successive enzyme hai wo kaam na kare so if this is not working there is a backlog of aortate it cannot be metabolized forward in the reaction another would be if there is more carbon oil phosphate production there will be accelerated cycle and more and more aortate will be produced so that condition is then known as raise syndrome okay right so biosynthesis of nucleotide uh, i think uh, this is something that is discussed in a different uh, chapter where we talk about uh, how vitamin b complex and adp and uh, these coenzymes uh, are actually uh, involved in those reactions chapter 7 mein ye baat humne karni hai so i'll just leave it there so pyrimidine synthesis important concepts all done uh, all the very best if you like the video please share and subscribe the channel my name is dr asif qureshi and you are watching dr asif lecture